All right. Good morning, everybody. Today, this is six. Uh, this is seventh grade math with Miss Adkins, North Parkway Middle School. Um, for all of you um, at home who are not able to tune into the virtual lessons on our Microsoft Teams program. So today we're talking about Module 1, Lesson 2, Proportional Relationships. In your Eureka Workbook, this is page 4. So we're in Module 1, and then it says S.4 at the bottom of your page. All right, so today's objective is I can understand that two quantities are proportional to each other when there is a constant. Now, you might be asking, what is a constant? Okay, so if you anyone ever tells you you're constantly doing something, your mom tells you you're constantly leaving your dirty clothes on the floor instead of putting them in the hamper, that's basically saying that as sure as the sun is going to rise tomorrow morning, we know that you are going to do whatever it is they're talking about. So, but when we're talking about in math, if there is a constant, we need to think about our unit rates, okay? So this constant really means a constant proportionality. Proportionality. Um, we're gonna talk about that in our lesson three more, but basically when we're talking about a constant, they are gonna be proportional if there is a constant. Okay, what we think about when we think about constant is when the unit rate remains exactly the same. It can't change even a little. We have a constant. Okay, when the unit rate remains exactly the same, it has to be exactly the same if it changes even a little bit, even by one one hundredth of a decimal, then automatically we do not have a constant anymore. It did not remain the same. Okay, so that's what we're going to be talking about today. Is did our unit rate remain the same? Do we have a constant? All right, so on our next page, our next slide, we have pay by the frozen, by the ounce frozen yogurt. Okay, this is in your lesson two. It's our very first class example. Okay, so a new self-service frozen yogurt store opened this summer that sells its yogurt at a price based upon the total weight of the yogurt and its toppings in a dish. Each member of Isabel's family weighed his dish and this is what they found. Determine if the cost is proportional to the weight. So they tell me cost to weight right there. So I'm going to be trying to find cost per weight. And if you watch my previous video, you know that I always tell my students whenever we see that word per, we slash it out. That's how we know what is my numerator, in this case the cost, and what my denominator is, in this case the weight or my ounces of yogurt. So, um, so we're at a frozen yogurt shop, right? Isabel's family's at a frozen yogurt shop. So similar to Chipotle or Moe's or Subway, you have to tell them what you want on it as they go down the line of toppings. So as you're going down the line, the more things you add, the heavier the yogurt's going to get, right? So then at the end, at the cash register, they have a scale. And they're going to weigh it. And how much your yogurt weighs depends on how much you have to pay, okay? So, we need to be thinking about cost per ounces, my cost per weight. So, when I'm going through and I'm looking at each of my data sets here, I have four beautiful data sets on my table. So, I'm trying to think, how am I going to find out what price per ounce is going to be? So, I need to take my cost, which is $5, and divide that by my number of ounces, 12.5 ounces. When I do that, I'm going to end up with the amount of 0.4. So we're thinking about money. So I want to go ahead and list it as 40 cents. So I have 40 cents per ounce. My cost is going to be 40 cents per ounce. So now I need to think 
if it stays the same. Because remember, we said if it ever changes, it has to stay exactly the same. So if it changes even by a penny in this case, that it's not constant, my unit rate ended up changing. So I have to have a good constant unit rate remaining all through my table. So now on the next one, I'm gonna again, we're gonna take our $4 divided by our 10 ounces, and that will get me 0.4 again, or 0 0.4, 4 tenths. Remember, I'm thinking about money, so I wanna list it as money, so that's 40 ounces, or 40 uh, cents, sorry, per ounce. So 40 cents per ounce again, so, so far, my first two data sets are telling me um, that I've got 40 cents per ounce of yogurt, which is great because so far they're staying the same. Now, will you please pause your video because I need you to complete the last two points of data in your table. All right, thank you for pausing your video and working on that. I'm gonna change my pen to green really quick so that we can see the differences. So then now we have our $2 for five ounces. So again, our cost goes up top, $2 for our five ounces, and that will get me 40 cents again per ounce. And then our last one, we had a cost of $3.20 divided by our eight ounces. And again, that gets us 40 cents per ounce of yogurt. So being that my unit rate or my price per ounce stayed exactly the same the entire way through my data table, I can confidently say that there is a constant unit rate, meaning that it is proportional. So right here in my sentence, the, the cost blank, the weight we can write is proportional to the weight. My cost is proportional to that weight. On our next slide, we're talking about that same problem, okay? So it's our same table. We just took an extension problem here. So go ahead and write on the side, you've got 40 cents per ounce of yogurt, because we already found that out on the previous slide. So our next problem says, Isabella's brother takes an extra long time to grate his dish. When he puts it on the scale, it weighs 15 ounces. If everyone pays that same rate in the store, how much will his dish cost? And how am I gonna calculate the cost? Now remember, he's not just getting one ounce, or two ounce, or three ounces, or four ounces, right? He's getting 15. So he's gonna be charged that 40 cents for every single ounce that he's getting. So essentially 15 times our unit rate. So that's a repeat action and we know repeat actions are multiplications when we're dealing with grouping of numbers. So we have 15 ounces times our 40 cents per ounce. and that's gonna give us $6. And then we have a great extension question again. What happens if you don't serve yourself any yogurt or toppings at all? If I don't serve myself any yogurt or toppings at all, how much do I pay? Well, if I didn't buy anything, then I don't have to pay anything, right? So um, it's gonna be $0 and zero cents, but why, how much do you pay? Like, how do we know? Um, we didn't purchase any yogurt. And we can also think of it as zero ounces times my unit rate is still getting me back to zero dollars. Zero ounces times the 40 cents because anything times zero is still zero. All right, so on our next slide, we have a cooking cheat sheet. In the back of a recipe book, a, a, a diagram provides easy conversions to use while cooking. What does the diagram tell us? Is the number of ounces proportional to the number of cups and how do you know? So we have to think about 
ounces per cup because they said the number of ounces proportional to the number of cups. So again, we're thinking about ounces per cup. All right, so remember that my ounces is gonna be my numerator and my cups is gonna be my, my denominator here. So when I'm dividing out zero divided by zero gives me zero, right? So that unit rate I'm gonna put here for a zero in the middle of my, my chart so I can keep track of it. Now my next one, when I take, change my pen color to blue so we can see the differences really quick. All right, so now when I'm taking four divided by that one half, it's going to end up giving me eight. So I have eight for that unit rate. Now, I'm not so concerned with this zero being here and messing up my unit rate because I know that if there is nothing that I'm purchasing, then I have to pay nothing. So that is always going to be there. We have to make sure that the rest of our data remains the same. We want the rest of our data to be that eight in the middle. If it isn't, then we know it's not constant and it messes the entire table up on proportionality. All right, so pause your video here and go ahead and finish out the eight, the 12, and 16 ounces. All right, thank you for pausing. So you should have gotten when you took eight divided by one, that gave you an eight. When you took 12 divided by one and one half, that gave you an eight. And then 16 divided by two also gives you an eight. So being that I stayed the same all the way through my table, again, we're not considering the zero because we do know that in all terms, if I have nothing in ounces, then I have nothing in cups. If there's nothing in my cup, then I have zero ounces. Um, so I do say the same for the remainder. So I can say the ounces are proportional to the cups. They are proportional to those cups. All right, we're gonna skip this one problem on slide number six. We're gonna to go to the summer job problem. So when we're on our summer job problem, it's example three on page six of your workbook. Um, it says, let's read through this together. It's talking about Alex and he's got a good summer job. Alex spent the summer helping out his family's business. He was hoping to earn enough money to buy a new $220 gaming system by the end of the summer. That's important, we're gonna to need to know that. So let's go ahead and circle that. It's important for us to know how much his goal is. He wants to buy a $220, $220 gaming system by the end of the summer. All right, so halfway through the summer, after working for four weeks, he had earned $112. Alex wonders, if I continue to work and earn money at this rate, will I have enough money to buy the gaming system by the end of the summer? So he just told us a point of data. He told us four weeks, he had $112. And they've already placed that in our table for us. Four weeks, $112 earned. So to determine if he will earn enough money, he decided to make a table. He entered his total money earned at the end of week one here, which is $28, and his total money earned at the end of week four, like we just said. So now we need to fill in the rest of this table. Well, first of all, we know that if he didn't work any at all, then He's not going to make any money, right? No work, no pay. So we need to put in zero dollars for this data set. Now, if each week he's getting $28 for helping out his family's business, then we're going to have a repeat action, right? He's going to get $28 the first week. The second week, he's going to get another 28 the third, another 28, and so on and so forth. So we have that repeat action of $28 happening for every number of weeks that he's worked. 
So repeat actions with grouping numbers is multiplication. So I know that I can take my unit rate of $28 and then multiply that by the number of weeks that I'm working and come out with my answer. So when I take 28 times two, I know that I, my total for Alex after those two weeks is $56. Do one more for that three weeks, and then I'm going to have you fill out the rest of the table on your own. When I take my three weeks times my $28, that's going to give me my amount after that three weeks, and that's $84. So now we're up to $84, and then we know on the fourth week he had $112, and that stayed constant. Remember, we're trying to figure out if our unit rate of $28 stays constant through the whole thing, and if it does, will it work out? So right now we're using our constant in order to fill the rest of the table. We're using our constant that we know exists to fill the rest of our table. Please pause your video now and complete weeks five, six, seven, and eight. All right, welcome back and thank you for pausing your video as I asked. So 28 times our five weeks of work ends up with $140 for Alex. When you took your 28 times your six weeks for Alex, that ends up with $168. Your 28 times seven ends up with $196. And then your 28 times your eight weeks ends up with $224. So we have to go back to our original problem. He's trying to get that system for $220. Is he going to end up with enough money at the end of his summer? The answer is going to be yes, because he ends up with $224. So he even has $4 to spare. Okay. All right. The next part is the same problem. We just worked it out. Um, are they proportional? We're talking about this. We just worked with the partner to answer Alex's question. Are Alex's total earnings proportion, proportional to the number of work weeks he worked? And then how do we know? We can say, yes, it is proportional. Because each week, he earned $28. So he each week of work, he still earned that $28. All right, our closing statements is how do we know if two quantities are proportional to each other, if their unit rate stays the same between each other, and then how can we recognize a proportional relationship when looking at a table or a set of ratios. We simply find the unit rate as we move through, and as it stays constant, we know it's proportional, but if it ever changes, we know it's not proportional. We're gonna do those tomorrow. You have these two practice uh, problem set problems in your workbook. If you would, please work on those. And again, whenever you're coming to turn in your work, make sure that you have your name on all your papers. I know they're trying to rubber band them all together so that all your papers, none of them, are getting lost, they're all staying together. But if you could, would you please make sure that you write your name on all of your papers um, that you're turning in? That way, if something falls out of the, the band, uh, we still know how to get it to the correct teacher and get you your points for participation and attendance. So if you would, please make sure that you're working on your workbooks, writing your name on your papers, and then when it's time to come and turn in your workbook pages, just tear those out of your workbook, bring those in, and they will get them to your correct math teacher so that we can get you in for attendance and your participation. All right, guys. So thank you very much for tuning in for lesson two of module one, seventh grade math. And this, again, this is Ms. Adkins, and I will see you guys another day. Bye, guys.